The last thing you need on a rough passage is cans of food rolling around, or worse, becoming projectiles. Hi, I'm Carolyn Sherlock. And on this episode of the Boat Galley Podcast, I'll share tips to help you store canned goods on board without ending up with a huge mess. This episode of the Boat Galley Podcast is sponsored by Quahog Bay Bedding, offering custom bedding for your boat-shaped mattress. Perfect snug fit every time with their cinch fit system. Whether your mattress is on the boat or on land, Quahog Bay Bedding has the perfect solution for easy and beautiful bed making, including coordinated blankets and toppers. Tired of sheets that don't stay put? They've got you covered. Sleeping on board has never been more comfy or as easy. Visit Quahog Bay Bedding, that's Q-U-A-H-O-G-B-A-Y-B-E-D-D-I-N-G dot com to learn more. If you're going to cruise for more than, say, a week at a time, you're likely to have a bunch of canned goods aboard. Dave and I always figured that if our refrigeration failed, we could still eat well if we had a decent stock of canned good aboard. While we never had a problem with the refrigerator, our stock of canned goods enabled us to go two to three weeks between provisioning runs. And since we like snorkeling, hiking, and fishing far better than schlepping groceries, this has always worked perfectly for us. In most meals, I use a combination of fresh, canned, and dried food to add interest and variety. So, you're thinking, what's there to know about stowing canned goods? Well, it's not quite as simple as I thought when I did the first provisioning run for our first boat, Ketal. I learned a few things the hard way. First, cans are heavy. They're typically about a pound each. That means two things in storing them. First, cans need to be stored low and in the center of the boat so they don't interfere with the trim of the boat. And secondly, cans need to be stowed securely so they don't become flying missiles in rough weather or when a jet ski comes by. Now, while cans don't break, they are susceptible to pinholes from salt spray or drips. So if there's any chance that salt water could get into a particular locker, use solid plastic bins to hold the cans. And if the salt water could come from above, those bins need to have lids. Sometimes the salt spray comes as you're transporting groceries to the boat in a dinghy, or even down the dock on a windy day. Cans can also carry insects and their eggs. For both these reasons, it's good to give cans a quick wash and dry when you first bring them aboard. Yes, it does add extra work as you're putting them away, but cleaning up leaking cans or insect infestations can take far longer. Another big consideration is to keep cans from shifting with the motion of the boat. If the cans can move, they will. And this will result in dented cans, possibly broken cans, and pinholes from wear and tear, plus lots of noise. In large lockers, that's anything over about one cubic foot, I'd use two or more plastic bins to divide the space up. Otherwise, it's hard to keep the cans from shifting with the motion of the boat. With smaller spaces, it's easier to add rags or pieces of bubble wrap to keep cans from moving and to consolidate cans from one bin to another as you use some up. I also used bins with smooth, rounded bottoms in a couple of lockers that had wiring running along the bottom of one side. I definitely did not want a can rubbing a hole in the insulation on the wire and causing a short, or worse, a fire. In smaller lockers and on shelves, I used non-skid shelf paper so that cans wouldn't slide as much. I also used padding to take up extra space. Now, most cruisers prefer to store cans upright so they don't roll. And that's one reason to take up extra space with padding, so that cans don't fall over and start rolling. Rolling is more likely to dent cans, cause pinhole leaks, and it is horribly noisy. 
For cans stored in lockers accessible from the top, it's a good idea to label the tops of the cans. That way you don't have to pull out every can just to see what it is. Be sure to use a permanent marker though so that the ink doesn't run. And labeling the top is also a good idea if there is any chance, however remote, of the cans getting wet or damp and the labels coming off. Guessing at can contents can make some very interesting meals. In the show notes, you'll see my recommendations on bins, padding, and other items mentioned here. And thanks for listening to the Boat Galley Podcast. Don't forget to subscribe in your favorite podcast app so you never miss an episode.